It's a great day at CIP. My name is Matthew Kishork, the National Summer Program Coordinator. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's Google Hangout. I hope everyone was able to see the amazing selfie that Ellen DeGener took of the Oscars. 34, over 34 million tweets and reviews about it. It's crazy. But did you see the pic of the professionals in the autism community at the Oscars? Can anyone recognize any of them? So take a look, email me with all of them. If you can get them all right, I'll send you guys a prize. So you can send that out. So tonight is a very special night where I have guests from all over the United States. You will be hearing from a former summer student, his mom, and select experts around CIP land who will be talking about the comprehensive curriculum that CIP uses during its summer program. During the live event, I encourage you to submit questions at any time. We will answer as many as we can at the end. I would like to introduce Byron and his mother, Lori, from Avon, Indiana. Hello. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> so Byron joined summer at CIP in 2011 at Buffalo, New York, and has completed two summer programs, and last year was a counselor in training. So three years total, Byron has been with summer at CIP. So thank you for joining us tonight, Byron. You're welcome. Ple pleasure to be here. So can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, um, uh, I am now 18, and I am broadcasting live from my college dorm room. Apologize for the mess if there's anything visible. Um, uh, I, uh, when I started the program, I was a little nervous about being so far from home in Buffalo, New York for two weeks, but um, uh, I uh, went... I did a lot better than I thought I would, and I uh, decided to come back a second year. And again, I had a lot of fun. And this year, um, uh, it's uh, this year was different and fun as well. It's just always been different every year I've gone. Uh, lots of different people. I've met a couple. I've met a lot, and I have uh, made a lot of new friends. And uh, I uh, am, oh, by the way, I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. That's great. So, so Byron, what are some of the fun activities that you participated as a camper? So uh, we, went, we went swimming. Uh, we went to the amusement uh, park. The uh, name of it is Escaping Me. Um, uh, we went uh, laser tag. Um, uh, that was really fun. Go-karts. Um, uh, Several on uh, several in dorm or room, whatever we were staying in games, and something that I like to do with a couple of people, Scrabble. Actually, my first summer out in Buffalo was Byron's first summer as well. And Byron, do you remember that one game? It was kind of like you guys wanted to play it. Um, it was with flashlights in the dark outside. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Sentry. Century, yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah, we actually got to do that this year. Although there was a, there just needed to be a little bit of tweaking um, uh, if it needs to be, if it's going to be done again, just a little bit of tweaking. Mm -hmm. Just to uh, the um, uh, the rules worked well. It was just needing a bit more tweaking for the different level of abilities. Um, but other than that, it worked really, really well once those small changes were made. I was impressed how a lot of people, even if it wasn't their first choice of something to do, were um, uh, at least interested in trying. That's great. So if you could give advice, advice to a future camper, what would you tell them? Um, uh, it, uh, it is not going to be as bad as you think it is. Um, uh, make some uh, friends and bring at least a couple dose, extra doses of meds in case uh, you have a long trip back and you need to take a dose and uh, you uh, don't want to find out that you only packed enough for the two weeks and not on the way home. That's good advice. In your three years, what was your number one summer experience that you had? Um, uh, hmm. 
Well, um, uh, I guess my favorite was being able to ride Superman Ride of Steel for the first time. <laughs> yeah, that first year it was shut down from an uh, accident. Remember? Yeah, yeah, everyone was pretty bummed about that. Yeah. Um, well, that's good that you were able to go on second time. Do you have your hands up the whole time? Um, uh, I quoted the entire ludicrous speed scene from Spaceballs, if that counts. <laughs> that's good. Oh, I almost forgot. Last year we also finally, granted this was with some uh, considerations and was appropriate, but we did get to do a toga party last year. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Yeah. On the Flickr page, if anyone wants to view that, you can go to cipworldwide.org and view the Flickr page for the Buffalo Summer Program, and they'll be they'll be in there. So, what did you take away from summer at CIP, Byron? Um, uh, that uh, I uh, have taken away a lot of. Uh, well, I'm still. Well, I learned how to uh, cook. I have. Uh, learned, so to speak, how to, um, more importantly, how to teach others on skills that I may already have that they may not. That's probably one of the, the other, the mo I think the most would actually be that I learned a little bit about myself as a leader and who I was, discovering who I was. Yeah, being a leader, you were a you know, counselor in training last year, which is great. You know, we are glad to have you last year. And how was that? experience different than being a camper? Um, uh, there was a lot of uh, responsibilities and uh, there were um, it was uh, um, it was a little harder trying to get up rather than being woken up but I managed to uh, pu push through it. Um, that was one of the more Difficult things. The other was paperwork. <laughs> uh, the daily reports. Yep. So, what did you see the campers last year take away from the program? So, being on the other side as a, you know, a counselor, what were some things that you saw that they were able to? Um, uh, a couple of. Uh, a couple of them were um, actually took away a bit more confidence in social interactions and had made some friends where they didn't very really have many. So the social skills um, some definitely picked up. Others picked up um, uh, some of the financial, others organization, time management. Um, but I think the most important thing was that most people took away was uh, interactions with others and how that they definitely took away at least some friends and everything from the program. Yeah, that's and always my favorite thing to see. You know, being a small program, only 12 students, you can really you know, get to know each other pretty well and click you know, fairly you know, quickly, which is always great. Yep. So right now in college, how's, so how's that going for you? You're, it's your, is it your freshman year? Uh, yeah, technically. Mm -hmm. And living in the dorms? Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> it's been kind of hard um, uh, adjusting. The first semester was uh, really, 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 really rough. Um, but I got through it. Now I'm trying to uh, pull up some grades for the end of the term and uh, keep... Uh, I'm using organizational skills a bit more now. Um, uh, I am also, uh, I only really ever come back to my dorm room to uh, sleep and to sleep and uh, submit some online assignments. I'm uh, off on campus finding that I study better in the library than, and do homework better there than I do in my dorm. So, yeah, learning where and learning how to do homework and where I'm best at homework is what I am uh, still going through now. That's great. It took me probably two years to figure out that 
you know, I shouldn't be in the dorm room with my roommates, that I should go to the library. And then as soon as I did that, my, you know, grades definitely improved and I was able to focus a lot better. Yeah. Well, I had to figure that out quickly because we had um, a, a dorm above us that was uh, really, really raucous when it came to playing Xbox. Well, Byron, thanks so much, and You're good welcome. luck with college this semester. Um, always nice to have you, you know, speak with you and you know, catch up with you. You know, it's great Same to hear here. that you know you're adjusting to college and you're doing well. Thanks. So now I would like to invite um, or introduce Lori, who which is Byron's mom. So welcome, Lori. Hi, great to be here. So thanks for joining. Um, so, how did you first hear about CIP? Summer at CIP. You know, I first heard about the program was kind of when I was doing a lot of research online because I knew I wanted uh, Byron to get involved in some kind of program, and I just searched and actually thought that they had a location in Bloomington, which was only an hour away from us, and. You know, researched it, thought it would be a great thing, but due to our timing and things, um, when we went to enroll, um, Amherst was the only um, alternative to go to, so we shuffled up to Buffalo, and uh, that's how we got there. So, when you shuffled up to Buffalo, what were your first thoughts after dropping Byron off, the, off, you know, first summer being away and driving back? Well, I think on the way up there, Kind of, kind of stressful for me because, you know, it was a long. It's at least eight hours from home, and he's going to be gone for two weeks, and I wasn't really sure what to expect and how things were going to go. Um, Byron had never been away from home for more than a night or two, and so I, it was really stressful getting there. Um, after I got there, and we had the get to know you session with the parents and the students. I felt very comfortable, and actually, when I left there, I was I was sad, but I really felt that he was in good hands. So leaving was much more comfortable for me than I thought it would be because I saw such a welcoming environment for him there that alleviated a lot of stress. And I knew it was going well when I really only heard from him once or twice in two weeks. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. I always get a lot of calls and emails from, from families, and they're saying, you know, I'm, I'm concerned. Is uh, Johnny doing okay? You know, I haven't heard from them. I'm like, no, that's, that's a good sign. He's in good hands. Don't worry. We'll, we'll have him touch base in a, in a few days, but, you know, enjoy it. They're, they're, he's having a lot of fun. Yeah, it's the no news is good news philosophy. <laughs> so after Byron came home from his first experience, did you see any changes? Definitely. I mean, the most marked change for me, and I remember it so clearly, was when I went to pick him up, and I saw him coming back and turning in his key as I was walking to the elevator to go up to his room. And normally, I would have expected him to be really excited to see me, and I missed you, Mom, and everything. And he just walked by me and said, hey, Mom. And we went up to his room, and it was just like, you know, he was he was so comfortable there, and, you know, while it was hard for me as a mom not to hear my son say, oh, I missed you, um, it was really amazing to me to see that casual, hey, how you doing, mom, that a typical teen would do um, that was just outstanding. And the confidence level he had from then on and his ability to welcome new challenges and not be as timid to try things uh, was was really remarkable. So what, as a parent, what did you like about the program? I really liked that they were gone for two weeks in a very safe environment. Um, I knew that things would be taken care of. I had talked with, you know, people like yourself and some of the other staff members, Mary Lawler and some other folks up there, and I felt very, very much he was in, in good hands and very safe, and I just, I just felt like it was something that, while it was kind of 
intimidating and scary. It was something that we needed to do if we knew that he was going to be able to be independent later. Do you think that you know, doing the program being well, three times now, how did it help Byron prepare for his college semester or his college year this year? Most definitely, and I think um, where it's been the most successful is in how he can deal with uh, typical dorm situations and college situations. Um, he, you know, he's going to still have the time management and some of the organizational issues and adjusting and transitioning, but a lot of the social stresses and, you know, being able to go up and initiate conversations with the professors or, or other folks has been invaluable. Uh, he is, you know, in his element and he does not feel awkward or timid to go ahead and express and self-advocate for himself. Definitely. Do you have any recommendations to future parents that are listening right now? Um, yeah, I would say, you know, take a deep breath and know that you're doing the right thing for your child. Um, it can be kind of hard to start that letting go. Um, I think... Uh, the founder of CSP calls it the steel umbilical cord <laughs> um, because we feel so connected um, to our to our kids and I think it is one of the best things that you can do for yourself and for your child because the things they will learn and do when you're not there because we get so used to being there to try and assist and advocate and do things for our kids that it's hard to even step back and let them go through things and stumble a bit. And CIP is the best place to do that because they're surrounded with people who will support them um, and give them the opportunity to try things and stumble but know that they're safe and there's not going to be anything horrible that will happen as a result of making a mistake. Well, that's great advice. Yeah, the, the steel umbilical cord in Michael's book. Dr. McMahon book made for good purpose. I think it's I forget what chapter it is, but it's the chapter of Art of Letting Go with Steel Umbilical Cord. It it is it's hard to let go, but it made the transition now to college for him much easier. Um, he's only three hours away instead of eight. <laughs> so but it's still far enough that it's it's not easy to get back and forth. And had he not had the experiences at CIP and I have seen him evolve from camper to actually being in some leadership. Um, I think I might have been more inclined to try and keep him at school closer, um, but now I feel that you know he can handle this and he can do it, and he he's where he needs to be to be independent and um, use all those great things he learned at CIP. Well, great. Thank you so much, Lori, for for joining us tonight. Um, it's always great to uh, you know, hear about how Byron's doing. Definitely a success story where he came to the program twice and then he was a uh, counselor in training, he got that leadership experience, now off to college, and seems like he's doing well. And it's uh, great to hear. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So now we're going to get into the stuff everyone has been waiting for. So the meat of summer at CIP, the soul, the heart, the, that's right, Hank, the curriculum. So I'm extremely thankful that CIP has such amazing lead coordinators that are going to be joining me tonight from all over. The lead coordinator, what does that mean? So CIP takes pride in the curriculum and is continuously developing it. These lead coordinators do monthly training through all six of the centers. Tonight, these CIP All-Stars, and they really are, I'm not just saying that, you can go to their staff profile pages on the website and check it out. They're all really amazing. Um, we'll be explaining their specialties and how it is implemented in the summer at CIP. Um, before I introduce Jennifer, we had a one question come in. Uh, I said I was going to do it at the end, but I would like to just you know address it now. So one of the questions was um, how we work with the students on getting up in the morning. Let me see. Question: Advice of getting up in the AM. So with summer at CIP, 
you know, we work with the students on setting alarm clocks. A lot of them do different different ways of of, of setting the alarms, whether it be with a phone. Um, there's helicopter alarms, putting them far away. Um, let's see what Byron has to say about that question. Um, uh, well, there was occasionally the pounding on the door occasionally, and uh, then uh, I recall that first year, um, uh, I believe uh, there was sort of a collective thing on getting people up and ready to go. I believe it was Hart who wanted to use Screamo on his phone at max volume to get anyone up, and I don't think there is a person on this earth who could sleep through that. <laughs> But uh, there was, uh, if we couldn't rouse them from pounding on doors because of that double door, so to speak, in the newer areas where we were the past two years, we would try calling on the phone, so to speak, and if their roommate was out, we would ask the roommate to go in and open the door so we could get them up. Great. Well... Byron said it. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a morning person either, but, you know, we work with the students on coming up with different strategies to help um, get their best needs. So One of actually, those is not staying up all night long. We had a, I think there were a couple of uh, real uh, times, there were only a couple in the past couple of years that we had to uh, emphasize that staying up all night is not getting up in the morning. <laughs> Exactly. So thanks, Byron. And now I would like to introduce Jennifer Halloran and Kathy Bruner. Jennifer is the lead social skills coordinator in Bloomington, Indiana, and Kathy, who I had a pleasure to meet last summer when I was out at the program we worked together, um, is that was the on-site summer program coordinator at the Bloomington summer program. Um, and last year, me and Kathy had a lot of fun together with, with the students. So welcome, Jennifer and Kathy. Thanks, thanks. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, so please tell us not everything that you do, but in a nutshell, <laughs> what social skills training is and how no, it is implemented in summer at CIP. Okay, well, we, uh, I'm Kathy. And I'm Jennifer. And so we collaborated together prior to the start of last summer's program because one of the contributions we wanted to make to the summer curriculum, um, in addition to the fun that was planned and executed daily, was an opportunity to address some of the social skills like getting out of bed, being part of a group, um, appropriately talking to parents on the phone when, they're, when you're away, um, uh, how to tip when you go out in a social setting, um, how to be part of a group and be respectful by putting electronics away, a whole array of different types of social skills that we wanted to be part of um, uh, a social skills curriculum. And we tried to tie it daily in with our themes, and some of the themes included um, wellness and art and independent living, academics, exploring our town, which is Bloomington, um, coping and balancing skills, some of which Byron talked about, you know, getting into a new setting and how to find the balance there. And then we ended with some person-centered planning. So embedded in everyday activities were social opportunities to practice social skills, which for a lot of students coming into a CIP summer camp, that's often a really hard area to address for a lot of our students. Um, it's, an, it's typically a point of weakness, so it's an opportunity for us to work on it again and again. And so, so I, I had an opportunity to introduce the topic of social skills, and then Kathy was able to take those, you know, predetermined ideas and roll them into day-to-day -day, um, life for the students. And so we talked about things like um, the Superflex character from Michelle Garcia Winner, 
we talked about the five-point scale, which is something that we use here in the Bloomington Center. A lot of different tools that we use every day with our college students, we introduce those topics to the high school students. Um, the other thing that's really important in terms of how we teach social skills at CIP is it's very dynamic and interactive. So social skills isn't taught in an office with an instructor lecturing. I mean, the only way to really learn social skills is to practice them. So um, I know, Kathy, they did a lot of games. We did social skills games when they came, and I was um, introducing social skills. Kathy incorporated that into a lot of what they did over the summer. So um, that was, uh, we're able to, as Kathy said, collaborate on the front end, pick those topics that we know, because Kathy's also been a social skills instructor here at CIP in Bloomington. So she's very familiar with the curriculum. So she knows what many of the students need. Then we're able to identify those things, find fun ways of addressing them, and then practice, practice, practice. So yeah, so every day we got to incorporate <laughs> that, did. and it was we took it very seriously as sort of a keynote address. Really, the first day we was the first time that we introduced, and Jennifer mm -hmm. came, and that was perfect because then everybody established goals that they wanted to work on for the rest of the duration of the camp. And common language. We kind of had a common language in terms of how we talked about the skills they were hoping to work on. And the, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the Superflex heroes, uh, this cast of interesting characters. <laughs> and, um, and as we got better um, at identifying, everybody kind of identified with one of these Superflex characters. And we could talk about, you know, resistance to change. It's a rock brain moment. A rock brain <laughs> moment. Um, definitely look them up. If you're, if this is new to you, uh, give uh, Michelle Garcia Winters a little nod. And uh, it's just a fun way to, to be thinking about social skills and how we think about ourselves and and so that, and so we did icebreakers and activities to get to warm up the crowd daily, and everybody had a chance daily to reflect back on how things went with their goals. Uh, we called it morning and evening connections, so we had a chance to talk about that and the cherry in the pit of the day. So we're sort of keeping it all bookend every day. Um, Taking in the good, that's a big theme here at the Bloomington Center, and I know you guys use that a lot. We did the, that in the mornings, taking in the good, yeah. So it was, I thought that it provided a great basis from which to really look at what it would be like to be in a college setting, to live in a dorm, and to have this opportunity to address what it would feel like to be with other people in the dorm, which we were, and you know, you've never met before. Never met before, and having to go to like the school cafeteria and be a walking around on campus and going to the local haunts together, um, and so that turned out to be a perfect opportunity to really practice all the social skills again and again, and have a way to talk about it with each other, mm -hmm. including that five-point scale, which for some students was was crucial. Yeah, that's another good curriculum piece that we use. So Jennifer, do you have any success stories with the students that you've worked with, either at the full year program or the summer? Oh my gosh. So I worked with a student who is now an ambassador, um, and when I first met her, she, she already had a college degree, so academics were really not something that she was pursuing. It was really all social, and uh, a lot of social anxiety. Um, a lot of difficulty managing the sensory issues and the social issues, reading facial expressions, body language. So I had the pleasure of working with her for three years, and she's now um, living, still living in Bloomington, connected with um, um, a church. She's got friends. She's volunteering in the community. I mean, she has an amazing social life. And every time I see her, it, it just brightens my day because she worked very, very hard on identifying her strengths, and she has a ton of strengths in those areas that she really needed to work on, and she practiced, and um, yeah, it was fun. We were able to um, utilize the university, and interns from IU came in, and so she had a lot of social and mentoring help from peers um, to practice some of these skills and get 
connected places she wanted to connect. So that's probably one of my favorites. I have lots of them, but that's probably my favorite. I think that, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity that we have this curriculum as part of the CIP summer program. And we always say that it's sort of second to the fun and the, the celebration of being together, which is true. Um, but I like to think that it kind of pulls it all together for a lot of students. I mean, we had a number of students who, like Byron, when Byron first got, like, parents were nervous, kids were terrified, uh, everybody was sitting with their electronic device um, on the sofas, not talking to each other, wondering sort of what this was going to be like. And, you know, and it was just amazing, the transformation and how the friendships built. And, you know, and some of that we helped to nurture. But definitely, as because of the wide array of activities and opportunities, um, we saw so much transformation. And we get the privilege at the end to give feedback to the, to the student and to the families of where we've seen all the growth. And it's, it's just a privilege to witness. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's wonderful. Wonderful opportunity. And do you have any success stories from last summer, Kathy, with the students? Well, you know, it was funny. I just was contacted a couple of days, in the last couple of days, from a family who was looking for additional information about a student last summer. And it brought back a flood of memories of just how far we came so quickly. And, um, and I guess even coming back to the, the whole issue of electronics, because, you know, we always think that's going to be such a stumbling block because everybody loves their computers and <laughs> they love their phones. And, and we thought, oh, initially we might have to make rules about it or, you know, not putting those away, you know, talking about that skill of putting those things away. And, in fact, it really was never an issue because we started with the social thinking. Um, kids got into this groove. Everybody just was really in the present moment. And um, I was really touched by the end um, how connected students became to each other and how much they wanted to stay in touch with each other. I mean, they were building friendships that they will have for life. And it was such a joy and a lot of parents said that at the end oh my gosh now we have all these connections all over the United States with people people to go visit people to connect with some of the kids were already making plans to connect over winter break and spring break. are you coming back next summer I was like this is so great. great and uh you know really celebrating crying that they were leaving each other I mean it was it was very very moving um to see everybody come sort of from their fear and they're they're a bit isolated to this place of complete celebration and not wanting to leave, not wanting to leave. I mean, it was wonderful. We could have made it longer, Matt. Can we <laughs> start extending it? <laughs> yeah, a lot of families actually been been saying that. They're like, all right, what's next? We're ready for the three week, the four week. Um, so maybe we have to start thinking something maybe that later down down the line. But yeah, the connections at Bloomington last summer were amazing. There was one that was a little, but yeah, there was it was it was, it was amazing. Um, actually, Tanya just interviewed a student from there. Um, I, I won't say the name over over online, but um, I'll tell you later, Kathy, um, who's going to be going to another program, which, which is great. Great. Oh, it's just beautiful. It was really a, a privilege to be part of it. And, yeah, we're ready to do it again. So sign up, everybody. Yeah, and if everyone, well, let me get it over here. So if you saw the, the, the new flyer that the marketing team sent out, if you see right. that person having fun, that's Kathy <laughs> over <laughs> And these are all the students from last year. And if you look at the bottom right there, that guy. Yeah, he's cool. There you are. <laughs> That's great. And Kathy, I don't know if you saw, but we got summer at CIP Shades this year too for all the students. No way! I'm yep. excited. Really cool shades with a uh, summer at CIP on the side. <laughs> Sign me up! Sign me up! You're you already signed up. You're gonna be at the program. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Matt. 
Well, thank you. Thank you guys for you know sharing all your stories um, and giving us what social, um, all the social things that you do with your students. Um, and parents definitely appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Privilege. Thanks for joining. So besides doing social skills training, like Byron was saying, and you know. And they were just saying, we do a lot of other things like banking and budgeting, money management, social dining and chit chat, dining etiquette, self disclosure, you know, wellness with diet tracking, nutrition, self initiation, balancing priorities and demands, the difference between high school and college, not the same, it's really different. How to read that syllabus that your professor gives you, short term and long term goals person center planning. So that's kind of the whole curriculum that we use. And now I'd like to introduce another lead coordinator from the Brevard Center down in Melbourne, Florida, Jennifer Kalerik. Thanks for joining us, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for having me join you. And uh, just wanted to fill everybody in on a little bit about what we do with careers during the summer program. And um, one of the main things that we do are some career assessments to get an idea of what a student might be interested in in the future. And a lot of times it's still early on and it's going to change over time, but it's very helpful to start out with some assessments. So to do some interest inventories, to look at what, what are their work values, what's important to them in the workplace, is it relationships, is it support from their supervisor. Um, also look at their personality type. Um, we can have them maybe do a Myers-Briggs or that interest profiler is another way to approach um, learning a little bit about their personality and how that might affect what careers are a good fit for them. And um, so we'll do all the assessments and I tell our students and families it's kind of like putting together pieces of a puzzle. You know, we, we look at a little bit of each of these assessments and put it together and that can provide a bigger picture on you know, which careers might be a good fit. Should they consider something in medical or computers? Um, we put it all together and then we can research those careers. And then if they continue on in the program, we can look into those more deeply. You know, and one of the things that really helps once we do the assessments is for a student to have an opportunity to actually try out one of those careers. Um, so in terms of families and how they can prepare and I know you're already talking about you know what they can do in general you know I find for for families who are trying to prepare their students for the next step so a lot that are coming in the summer program or maybe coming from high school and they might you know it's what, ages 16 and 19 is that right Matt? Yeah for our high school summer program yep so sophomores, juniors and seniors and then for our beyond students that have graduated to the age of 26 Right. Okay. So especially for the younger students, but also our older students, you know, those basic life skills are just so critical. The thing is, most of the families are coming in and they want to know what careers are good for my student, or the students want to know what careers might be good for me. And they're thinking big picture, and that's good. But also, what I really want to encourage students and families to think about are some of those independent living skills that we also work on in the program. And, you know, are they taking their medications independently? You know, are they waking up at a good time in the morning? Are they using an alarm clock or are they using their mom or dad? You know, are they um, going to bed at a good time, right? So they can get up in the morning. If they drive their car, do they put gas in the car? Or do they have, have they ever used a debit card? So if they have to go and get gas or get something, they can put that in the car. So a lot of you know how students can progress career-wise is determined by the foundation of their independent living skills. So I can't stress that enough and that's that's a big part of our summer program is starting to get a taste of that and you know it, it's about uh, seeing our program as a whole and part of that is they're gonna see is learning how to be more independent, learning can, can they cook on their own? Can they learn how to do laundry? All of those things because when you want to be able to focus on your career, you want to knock out some of those independent living skills. So that's something to think about that a lot of families don't think about. Um, 
maybe doing wellness to reduce the sensory impact that could impact them in the workplace, and um, thinking about just dietary. Like, um, might not think about how what they eat might impact if they're having low energy or high energy when they're at work. But I really want to encourage families to build up that perseverance for students to build it up. I, I think, you know, a lot of times families, whether they're younger or older, the thought is, okay, let's, you know, how do we get them ready for a full-time job? You've got to start small and build. Um, most of us, you know, we started somewhere. In high school, you know, I started out or before high school with a paper route and then worked in a pizza place. I think we've all started somewhere, right? And you build up the hours. Most people don't start at 40 hours a week right off the bat. And for our students, it's just like college. You want to start smaller and build up. So if they're being successful at two hours a week, then they can go to four hours a week, go up, you know, even more and more. So families preparing for next steps. The summer program is a really great place to start, and I want to encourage them to continue thinking about independent living skills and start with community service, which we do at the summer program. So students typically are going to participate in a community service activity on a weekend and um, maybe help out at a festival or do like an oyster reef restoration project or I think we might have lost Jennifer. Um, can everyone hear me good? Hear me good? All right, let's try and see if Jennifer can get back on. Jennifer, are you there? All right, I think she might have some te technical difficulties. Um, but Jen if Jennifer, if you do come back on, just you know, butt in. We'll get you back on. Okay. So I know what everyone's thinking about right now. They're thinking that this is exactly the type of program my student needs needs help with executive functioning, the social skills, life skills, and could definitely use a taste of college, and definitely the independent piece. But how do I know if this, my student is the right fit? So now I would like to introduce Tanya Linehan from the National Office, who is the Summer Program Admissions Coordinator, who's going to be going over the Summer SCIP student profile, so you will know by the end of this webinar when she's done talking, if summer SCIP is a good choice this summer for you and your student. So welcome, Tanya. Thank you, Matt, and good evening, everybody. Um, I've so enjoyed listening to everybody so far speak about our summer program. It's really such a great program. Um, it's so nice to have Byron and his mom join us. Um, but we currently have two summer programs. The high school summer program is open to students entering 10th, 11th, and 12th grades in the fall, whereas our Beyond High School summer program is open to high school graduates who have not yet reached age 27. Um, our programs are specifically designed for students who carry a documented diagnosis of a learning difference, nonverbal learning difference, ADHD, Asperger's syndrome, high-functioning autism, and or pervasive developmental disorder. Students' full-scale IQ should be in the low range to the very superior range. Students should be compliant with prescribed medications and be able to self-medicate. Students should be emotionally, psychiat psychiatrically, and behaviorally stable and students should have a high level of motivation to meet program goals. So to apply for admissions to one of our summer programs, the first step is to complete an application 
which can be found on our website. And you, you'll return it to our National Admissions Office with the necessary supporting documentation. Completed applications are processed as they are received, though we do have deadline dates that are listed on our website. Once the review of the application is completed by our admissions team, and it is felt that there is a match between CIP and the student, the admissions team will extend an invitation for the student to interview. Interviews are conducted via Skype, and the interviews really help us learn more about the student and you know, really also help us to determine the best peer fit at each location, along with making roommate assignments. Our admission team will then review all of the material and make a determination regarding the acceptance into the program. And for more information about our admissions process, please refer to our website at www.cipworldwide.org. And you can also fill out an online inquiry form, and admission staff from our national office will reach out and answer any of your questions and assist you through the admissions process. So I'm hoping that we get to hear from some of you who are out there listening tonight, and we can assist you through our process and answer any questions that you still may have. So thank you, Matt. Well, thank you, Tanya. So it's about that time. No, it's not bedtime. My two-year-old already went to bed about an hour ago, and I keep getting the look from my wife to keep it down. Um, I see you falling asleep out there, door, door. Time to wake up. You know who you are. It's question time, so we're going to answer some of the questions that were submitted tonight. If you have any questions that you're thinking about right now, I'll submit them over to us um, so we can answer those. Um, so we have a question from Kathleen with Autism Brainstorm. Um, I'm going to pass this one over to the friends over at Bloomington. So Bloomington, do you have um, any recommendations um, for neurodiverse peers getting ready for transitioning into higher learning? So Kathy and Jennifer, do you have any recommendations? Can you unmute it? Oh, there we are. So the, can you repeat the question? Yep, yeah, hold on, let me pull it up. Number one recommendation they make for neurodiverse peers getting ready for transitioning into higher learning. Number one, hmm, number one recommendation. I, I, I would punt to, to the reality of the social skill settings because most students, if they're thinking of going into secondary education, definitely have the skills to make the grades. I think the preparedness of being in an environment and getting a feel for what it would be like, I mean, a lot of what Lori was talking about and that Lori's ready, mom is ready, the kid wants to be ready, I think having that opportunity to be immersed in the environment before you have to be there. Um, and, and I would really second that. I was at a swim meet over the weekend and I, I was sitting next to a professor at a university and they were talking about working with students with learning differences and the difficulties many of those students have with the social piece. And as Kathy said, in, in many situations they're able to, to, to do well enough academically, but or if they're if they're not if they're struggling, they they might not know how to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Their frustration gets the best of them instead of they don't because they don't know and they're getting increasingly frustrated. Then when they do reach out, it's not in a socially expected way. Difficulties with roommates <clears throat> can become a real issue, and so yeah, I think that social piece is key. And I think students learn so much about themselves. I mean, they will be thrown into this environment that is an opportunity very like going to a college. Um, it has all the same expectations that you're going to work well in a group, that you're going to figure out what to do with yourself. Sometimes when there's downtime, you're going to have to figure out how to get around town. 
Um, you're going to have to figure out how to socially get along with somebody that maybe, I mean, I think the whole thing of roommate um, yeah, is huge. huge. And, and in this program, even if you got along really well with your roommate, which we spend a lot of time, Tanya talked about that, we look at those, um, the Skyping um, interviews and really try to make the best determination of who's going to be a good fit with whom. And if they're not the best fit, how do we resolve that? Like it's such a great opportunity to work on those skills mm -hmm. with the safety net of staff there um, and help people work through that. How, how would you get beyond that? How do you talk to the other person? What do you say? Um, if you need help beyond that, who do you reach out to? Um, How do you reach out to them? Right. Yeah, I would say that's number one. I think everyone leaves better equipped to think about some of the networking that has to take place when they first arrive on a campus. I think everybody does. It's such a, you almost can't do it enough. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that, that would be my number one. That's my answer. I'm sticking with that. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That's right. So we have another question. So Byron, this question's Byron. This question's for you. Um, okay. How has so how have you feel, felt empowered by the CIP program? Um. Uh, well, um. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain in that I have found. Uh, I have found uh, how far I. I have found that what I thought was how far I could go fell far short of what I was actually capable of. And it's that knowledge of knowing that uh, um, that I can go farther than what I thought I had could go to. That's what's been the most empowering. Great. Thank you, Byron. So if I wasn't a, if I was unable to get to any of your questions tonight, please feel free to contact me at any time. You can reach me at 877-566-9247, and you'll know that you have the right extension if the person answers the phone saying it's a great day at CIP. So I look forward to answering all your questions regarding CIP, um, and remember that the application deadline is March 31st. It's coming up very quickly. We've been getting a lot of applications in. Uh, Tanya's been working really hard, working with the families, completing the applications. She interviewed, I think, eight students this week. So things are, are really moving over at the national office with summer. Snow is finally melting, Getting it, even though we're supposed to get snow coming, but yeah, we're not going to talk about that. So just like the last Hangout, we have a surprise for all of you that you registered to attend this Hangout tonight. I'll be sending you an application waiver fee, fee via email. So this will waive the $75 application fee for one week. I'll provide the specific instructions in the email that I'll be sending you. So you can look in your emails for that. So you have one week to submit that application in. So thank you all for tuning in tonight. And remember, it's a great day at CIP. Good night, everyone. And thank you to all, everyone, the participants tonight. Without you guys, it would just be me talking and no one really wants to see that. So thank you guys very much. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Thank you. Happy to be here. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Take thank care. Thank you. Good night. All right. Night.